that's where we are. The key is not doing what you say you're going to do. The key is telling the person what you can actually do and not being afraid to say, no, I can't do that. Or here's the risks. You hear the same advice all the time when it comes to entrepreneurship, especially small businesses. Do what you say you're going to do. It sounds so easy. You hear people, I just read a tweet today on Twitter. Do what you say you're going to do. That's all you have to do to be a successful business owner. It had like 3,000 likes. It sounds so simple. And if you're a business owner, you know that it's kind of bullshit. And I'm going to tell you why. Everybody wants to do what they say they're going to do. If I tell somebody I'm going to do something, of course I'm going to try really freaking hard to do it, especially if there's money on the line. I'm not going to purposely lie to my customers. It's not a moral dilemma. I'm not fibbing. The problem is a step backwards. If we take a step backwards, how do we find ourselves in that situation? And the skill, the real advice, the real skill that most entrepreneurs don't have, especially small business owners, is to manage expectations. Because when you are face-to-face with somebody who wants to give you money to do something, and you have this dynamic constantly in your life that is customer on one end, business owner on the other, and the business owner must bow to the customer because the customer is giving the business owner money. The business owner or the employer must serve the customer. We must serve the customer. And you're looking them right in the eye and they're telling you what they want. There is nothing harder than saying, I can't. I can't make that happen. Put it simply, my wife said to me, Hey, Nick, we have a dinner date at 5.30 on Friday. Will you be there? It'd be very easy for me to say, yeah, honey, um, I have a tea time at 1 o'clock, but I think I can make it. I have a tea time at 1 o'clock tomorrow. But guess what? That's bullshit. I'd be late, and I know I'd be late, but I think deep down that I might just make it. Because we entrepreneurs, we're a rare breed. We are eternally optimistic it is in our nature it is the way we see the world that the glass is half full that we'll probably be able to get it done that if things go well this is how it might happen it's why we do what we do if we were pessimists would we even take this chance would we even go about this journey the answer is no if we were pessimists if we didn't see the glass half full if we didn't think we could get it all done in a day then we wouldn't be here trying to do this So the problem that we run into, the situation that we put ourselves in, is always one where we are chasing, 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 falling behind, falling behind, falling behind. And when people ask us if we can do it, we say yes. And it sounds like I'm being dramatic. That the answer is just do what you're going to say you're going to do. Do what you say you're going to do. That is bullshit. I'll tell you right now, That's not the problem. The problem starts when you tell them that. You shouldn't tell them that in the first place. So I told my wife, no, honey, I can't make that. I'll probably be on the 17th hole at 515. Friday golf is slow. It's probably going to take four and a half hours. I'm probably going to be sweaty when I get done and need to stop at the house and take a shower and change. Probably can't make it downtown until 615. That's not easy. That's not what they want to hear. So we just take the easy road. And what we end up doing is instead of managing expectations, we run around managing angry people, angry customers, angry family members, angry friends, people who we're letting down. We run around managing them. So the hard part is that why in the road where we have the easy road and we have the hard road way before we've done anything, way before we've even done anything. We have that question come, can you do X by Y? The easy route is to say yes, of course. Especially when we're selling, when we want the business, when we need the money, when we want to have a happy wife, when we want to have happy customers. It's really easy to say, yeah, I can do that. I can deliver. We can get done on that timeline. The shipment will probably arrive on this day and I can probably get it done then. Or I can probably mow 25 lawns on Friday. I can probably get to you early next week. And what we end up having 
And this happens so much. It's crazy. You probably can think of five times you've done this in the last month of your life. Talk to a small business around here, around anywhere. They're so overloaded with work. They'll tell you next week and it'll be two weeks after. It's all people talk about is how small businesses don't do what they're supposed to do, what they say they're going to do. All you have to do as a small business owner is do what you say you're going to do. Now, this is what I'm going to ask you to do. I'm going to ask you to take ownership over managing expectations and say no. Give the worst case scenario. Me in the real estate world, give the lowest projected returns and use those numbers to sell myself. Say, hey, look, here's the risks. Hey, look, here's what can go wrong. Hey, look, here's the potential delays that could happen. Hey, honey, we could get in a big traffic jam on hole 11. I have to sit there for half an hour. I might not get home till 7. I ended up moving my tea time to 11 a.m. because I'm a good husband. But this concept applies to every area of life. Real estate, small business, customer relations, sales. And just sometimes, you guys heard me. If you search Orrin Claff, K-L-A-F-F, on my website or on this podcast, you'll find an episode I did with him. It's called Flipping the Script. When you're selling customers on your service, you actually kind of lead by talking about the downsides, talking about the negatives, talking about what might go wrong, talking about what you should look out for. And what that does is it's a breath of fresh air for your potential customers. Holy shit, I got a guy that's shooting me straight. This guy's telling me the truth. I should probably trust him. He's not just selling the rosiness of, yes, he can do it. Yes, 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 yes. He's being real with me. If you get good at this, your world will open up. It starts with timing. Can you be here at this time? No, I can't. I probably can't. I'll probably be later than that. My business partner, phenomenal operator, phenomenal person, but I'll ask him, hey, you good with a tea time at 11 o'clock? Or hey, you want to meet for lunch at this time? Or hey, you okay for a Zoom call at this time with a potential partner? His answer is yes, but I know by now that I need to ask a follow-up question. Well, what's your day look like before that? Well, I have another meeting. Yeah, the tea time's at 1, but I have a meeting at 11, and I have you know I need to grab lunch in between. Okay, so you're going to pull into the parking lot, sprint down to the practice screen, and run to the first tea box and stress everybody out. So let's move the tea, back, tea time back. I mean, that sounds like a silly example, but this happens all the time in all areas of business. Managing expectations is the key. You may be overworked at work. In the next episode, I'm going to talk a little bit about that as well. If you're overworked at work, it's probably because you're pretty bad at managing expectations with your customers and your boss. That's where we are. The key is not doing what you say, doing what you say you're going to do. The key is telling the person what you can actually do and not being afraid to say, no, I can't do that. Or here's the risks. Or here's might go wrong. Or here's why we might be delayed. This is probably a more realistic time because it's like us to think, okay, I'm looking at how many jobs I have. Best case scenario, I can get 10 jobs done in a day, back to back for seven days. Okay, I can be there in the eighth day. Your job 100. It rains, the truck breaks down, a job takes longer than you thought. I know you're an optimist, but oh, jobs are hard. You end up solving problems. You may spend two days at that person's house instead of one. Give yourself some cushion. You'll live a much less stressful life, number one. You'll have much happier customers, number two. And you'll, you'll be happier. You'll be less stressed. Your customers will be happier. But it's uncomfortable. The negative here is that right off the bat, it's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable to manage expectations. But as a business owner, it's your job to do it for everybody in your life. Your family, your employees. It's really easy when you're recruiting to hire somebody to promise them the world and put a pay grade of, oh, in year two, we're going to be at $7 million a year in revenue. At year three, we're going to be at ten. You're an optimist. Let's be a realist. When you're managing expectations, you need to be a realist because the downside is a very real possibility. It's a real possibility that can ruin someone's morale. It can ruin a customer's experience. It can lead to a negative review. It can lead to an employee quitting. And it can lead to you being miserable. So choose wisely. 
Manage those expectations and have the hard conversation off the bat. Have the hard conversation now so you don't have to run around managing pissed off people with all your time. This episode of the Sweaty Startup is brought to you by Launch Kits. Visit launchkits.com slash sweaty for $50 off a $750 website. So for $700, and they actually turn it around in seven days as well. So for $700, you get an SEO search engine optimized website. You get G Suite integration with email and Google My Business optimization, and you get a beautiful website. Visit boltstorage.com. That's my website. Justin and his team built it. They've built over 100 websites for folks who listen to this show. And guys, it's as good as it gets. If you need to get found online, visit launchkits.com slash sweaty today.